All right, what's going on guys? In this video, we'll be talking about virtual environments. Uh, virtual environments are actually a pretty important aspect of Python programming, and it's something you should get comfortable with. Uh, it's something I've actually put off for a long time, and I'm actually now starting to notice why virtual environments are needed. So there's uh, two reasons why uh, virtual environments are very important. Uh, the first reason is uh, these package dependencies. So say we have NumPy and um, say we have something like Keras which depends on NumPy. And what happens is if, if NumPy gets updated to say 1.0 which happened recently, SciPy NumPy, and Keras is still using something like NumPy 0.9, what happens is if you upgrade uh, NumPy to 1.0 what's going to happen is Keras is going to break because this actually happened to me recently because NumPy actually made some changes that Keras was uh, still relying on. So these changes essentially broke Keras. To deal with situations like that when pack certain packages are um, updated and other packages rely on the older versions of those updates, it's best to use a virtual environment. So virtual environments help you sort of separate your projects and uh, each project could have their own dependencies that prevents any of your projects from, from essentially breaking or any of the packages from breaking. Uh, the next reason why uh, virtual environments are important is it's uh, very easy for debugging. So say you have a problem um, with say Keras, uh, something like recently for me, um, it, it would get to the end of the first epoch during training and it would just freeze and hang. So in that case, um, what you can do is, of course you can first try to upgrade or you can create uh, different virtual environments with say different versions of NumPy and the dependencies and see if something uh, broke in that case. Uh, another thing is when you're working in a, at a company or collaborating with multiple people, what you want to do is you want to be on the same page. So you, everyone wants to sort of use a virtual environment with these uh, dependencies and these versions. So that if there's a problem, everyone is sort of on the same page. You don't want people installing all these other uh, packages and sort of um, making it harder to debug. So if everyone sort of creates their own virtual environment with the list of dependencies, then it's it's sort of easier to debug. All right, the first thing I want to show you is um, one way you can look at dependencies is by pip show. So say I have pip, pip uh, 3.6 show something like Keras. So this will show all the dependencies. Um, so this is the author. And these are the dependencies. Unfortunately, it does not show the versions of the dependencies. So if you ever wanted to know which the dependencies of a certain uh, package, that's how you do it. All right, so let's just clear the screen. And the first thing we want to do now is install virtual n. Um, there's a couple of different packages for virtual environments, but I found this the simplest. So what you want to do is pip 3.6 install our virtual n. And um, I've already installed it. Sorry, let me see, this is pip uh, 3.6 virtual n. So this tutorial is mainly uh, going to be showing you how to do this on Windows. I do have Linux installed on my other computer, and eventually I guess I'll, I'll have to make a tutorial on Linux versions as well, but this is going to be focusing on Windows, mainly because I'm using Windows right now. All right, so pip 3.6 install virtual n, that's going to install the virtual environment package for you. Okay, so in my case, it's already satisfied. Now, to create a virtual environment, all you have to do is virtual n, and then you uh, give a name of your package. Now, the key thing you have to know is the, the virtual environment is going to be created in the directory you're currently in. So I'm currently in the C users Boondra, so you want to be careful of that if you don't want to create a virtual environment in that directory. So let's move to, um, let me see, I think I created, uh, let me see, I know I created something YouTube, oh no, it's in desktop, okay, so I'm just finding the package, okay, here we go, YouTube temp, okay, so I'm going to create my virtual environment here, YouTube temp. So what you do is first we're going to cd into uh, YouTube temp. Okay. Now what to create a virtual environment, all you have to do is virtual 
env and then uh, name your environment. So this will be this environment will be uh, let's just call it YouTube. Um, yeah, YouTube. We're join YouTube. Okay. So right now it's installing the um, it's installing Python. It's essentially essentially installing Python into uh, this folder YouTube temp. All right. So let's just take a look. Let's go to my desktop. Uh, YouTube temp. Okay. Okay, so we go into YouTube temp. So here is the uh, the virtual environment we created. So YouTube, and if you look inside, you have scripts, uh, the Python script. Um, you have a library, which is basically all the the built-in packages. Then you have site packages where you install all of your uh, Python packages. Okay, so this is essentially the virtual environment we created. All right, now to to actually activate the uh, virtual environment. So what you need to do is you need to activate the virtual environment to use it. To be able to install packages into your virtual environment, you activate it. And essentially what you're activating is, let's see, this bat file. Okay, so you want to run this bat file. So what we can do is we can just grab this. Actually, we'll just grab uh, this whole thing. Copy. All right, okay. So that's all you need is that's all you need to activate your virtual environment. So we're going to run this. Um, let's see, I just need to put quotation marks around this. Okay, we're going to run this, and now if you look at the left, you can see YouTube. So we are actually we actually activated YouTube, and we are using the virtual environment. So now if you say something like Python uh, Python three Point six or Python, it will actually be using the YouTube uh, Python. So as you can see, Python 3.6. So this is the YouTube version of Python. So let me just exit. Okay. Now, when you have activated it, you can do things like install uh, packages. So if you want to install something like uh, pip install uh, pandas. install pandas so it's installing pandas okay so let's just check if there's malware I don't know why it's taking so long just wait all right so it's done so it's only installing all the dependencies all right so let's just go to Python 3. Point, uh, Python now it should work Import pandas. Okay, so as you can see, pandas is working. Um, if I want to import something like Keras, which I have, module not found, import TensorFlow, which is something I have in my main Python. Um, as you can see, import you can't import TensorFlow because the package is not found. All right, so exit. So now you can basically run all your scripts from here. So you can do something like Python, and then you can have the name of the script. Um, testing testing.py or um, let me see I can just pull out a script okay so this is the one I had a problem with so the entire path okay. so you just like Python and then you run uh, I don't know if there's a faster way to do this have quotation marks around oh, that's good Ah, no module named Keras. I forgot to install Keras. But essentially, that's how you uh, you run uh, Python scripts. Now, say you wanted to actually uh, run your idle. Right now, we're running everything through the command prompt. So we have to run scripts through command prompt. But say you actually wanted to run idle from uh, from your virtual environment. The way you can do that is Python idle Idle. Okay, so this is something I haven't tested, but I, I read online. This is how you can do it. Okay, so as you can see, it opens up idle, and this is your virtual environment idle. So uh, let's just create a new file. Um, testing file save, and it saves it within your uh, virtual environment. So testing that py. Um, so this is if you wanted to if you want to activate idle from within your virtual environment. So now the last thing we need to know is how to deactivate 
how to get out of this environment. So right now we are in this environment and what we want to do is we want to get out of this environment. So the way we do that is deactivate. So deactivate and that's it. So just a simple deactivate and you're able to get out of the uh, environment. So now I'm in, if I run Python uh, 3.6, I'm actually accessing the, the main Python, the default Python, not the virtual environment. So I can do something like uh, import Keras. And as you can see, there's no problem. I'm importing Keras, yeah. import TensorFlow. So this is my uh, main uh, virtual environment. All right, so I think that's it with the basics of a virtual environment. Um, I just wanted to introduce you to virtual environment because in my future videos, I'll be using virtual environments. All right, so hopefully you found that useful, and I will see you guys in the next video.